Where does the quadratic formula come from? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now we're going to need to use something called completing the square. Now if you already know what this is, then you can skip ahead to the four minute mark of this video. But if not, then here's a full explanation of what the technique of completing the square is all about. Notice here that we have x plus 5 quantity squared. And if we multiply this out, we get x squared plus, well we have a 5x and another 5x, that gives us 10x, and then plus 25. Now, this expression over here is called a perfect square trinomial. It's a trinomial because it has three terms, and it's a perfect square because it's the square of this binomial x plus 5. Now, we can do the same thing with x minus 3 squared. If we multiply it out, we get x squared minus 6x plus 9. And again, this is a perfect square trinomial. Now, what do we notice about both of these perfect square trinomials? What we notice is that if we take half the coefficient of x and then square it, we get the number on the end. So up here, the coefficient of x is 10. So we take half of 10, which is 5, and then square it, and we get 25. Same thing down here. Take half of negative 6, which is negative 3, and then square it, and we get 9. And notice that it's plus 9. Just to make sure we understand this, let's fill in the blanks here x squared plus 12x plus what would make this a perfect squared trinomial? Well, half of 12 is 6, and then 6 squared is 36. Okay, and the way this factors would then be x plus 6 squared. Now, in the next example, we have x squared minus 10x. If we take half of negative 10, we get negative 5, and if we square it, we get 25, and again, it's plus 25. But the way this factors is x minus 5 quantity squared. So notice that the minus 5 is half of the minus 10. Now this last one is a little bit different because we have 7, which is an odd number. And we'll still take half of 7, which is 3.5, or 7 halves. And so we'll need to put 7 halves squared here. Now you could write that as 49 over 4 or just leave it as 7 halves squared. But the way this factors is x plus 7 halves squared. And you can check for yourself if you take x plus 7 halves times x plus 7 halves and FOIL that out, then you get this expression over here. Now in general, when we have x squared plus kx, we'll need to take half of the k. So we get k over 2 and square it. And then this will factor to be x plus k over 2 quantity squared. Now let's use completing the square to solve an equation. And this is going to help us show how to derive the quadratic formula. So let's look at an example. We have x squared plus 10x plus 14 equals 0. And notice this can't be factored. You think of things that multiply to get 14, you get 1 times 14 or 2 times 7. None of these are going to work to show that we can factor this. So how can we solve this using completing the square? Well, let's subtract 14 from both sides. We get x squared plus 10x equals negative 14. And then notice on the left hand side we have x squared plus 10x. If we want to complete the square we're going to need to add 25. right? Half of 10 and then squared. So we're going to add 25 to the left hand side and 25 to the right hand side. Now on the right hand side instead of writing as negative 14 plus 25 let's just write it as 25 minus 14. And then on the left side we can now factor this as x plus 5 quantity squared equals 11. So we have x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 11. So we get x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 11. Finally, how can we derive the quadratic formula? So what we want to do is solve the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now the first thing we'll do is divide both sides by a. And we're allowed to do this because a is not 0. Now notice on the left side that dividing by a is like dividing each individual term by a. So we can write this out as x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals 0. Then we subtract c over a from both sides. And we get x squared plus b over a x equals negative c over a. Now we're going to use completing the square to get a perfect square trinomial on the left hand side. So we need to take half of b over a, which is b over 2a, and square it. And we'll do that to both sides. So we'll add b over 2a squared to both sides. And again, on the right hand side, we'll write it as b over 2a squared minus c over a. Now, on the right hand side, we're going to multiply things out. So we'll get b squared over 4a squared. But we also want to get a common denominator. 
So to get a common denominator, we'll have 4a squared. So c over a, we multiply the numerator and the denominator both by 4a, and we get 4ac over 4a squared. Now on the left side, notice we have our perfect squared trinomial. So the way this is going to factor is x plus b over 2a quantity squared. We're factoring it just like we factored the previous examples. And you can check for yourself if you multiply that out, if you FOIL that out, x plus b over 2a times x plus b over 2a, then you'll get x squared plus b over ax plus b over 2a quantity squared. Then we take the square root of both sides, so we get x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Now the 4a squared is within the square root, but we can write the square root of a quotient equals the quotient of the square root. So we can write the right hand side as plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over the square root of 4a squared, but the square root of 4a squared is just 2a. Technically it's the absolute value of 2a, but we don't need to worry about the absolute value because we have the plus or minus here. Okay, then we can subtract b over 2a from both sides and we get x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And now we can combine these into a single fraction and notice we have the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that's how we use completing the square to derive the quadratic formula.